So we drive out to uh, the western side of the peninsula. It's not a real safe place to be if there's any sort of uh, wind, and we almost turned around. We put the robot down, and of course we see lots of quagga mussels, and we're like, oh great, another pile of quagga mussels. But in the distance, there's a shadow. And we get closer and closer, and this shadow just sort of materializes into the back of a ship. Zach Melnick and Yvonne Drabert are documentary filmmakers studying the ecological impacts within the Great Lakes. During the production of All Too Clear, they made a discovery that has never been seen in over 100 years. 10 meters from the bottom. Using a high-tech underwater drone, Melnick and Drabert are able to go down into the depths of Lake Huron that very few people have ever witnessed before. We realize, oh my gosh, this thing is really big. Zach, what have we stumbled across here? Well, so we have a wooden steamship perfectly preserved on the bottom of the lake that nobody knew about. This is the Africa, built in 1873. The one clue that we found that really pointed toward the Africa, there's a whole bunch of coal on the ground around this ship. Think of this kind of ship like the transport truck of the 1800s. After speaking with marine archaeologists and historians, the findings were shocking. In 1895, uh, it actually went down in an early season snowstorm. Unfortunately for everyone on the Africa, no one knew where it went and 11 sailors went down with it. So the captain of the Africa was a man named Hans Larsen. And Yvonne and I live in Larsen Cove. So we live in the community named after the captain who went down with this ship. We also have historic weather information, and from that we can piece together what happened on the day the Africa went down. Incredibly, since the stories broke, three of the great-grandchildren of Captain Larson have actually reached out to us, and so we're gonna work with them to try to find a way to honor these sailors who, who went down 128 years ago. We're gonna take them out to the wreck next year and just give them a moment to reflect about what happened to their ancestors, and then after that, try to find a way to memorialize them at the, at the local museum or something like that, you know, try to find a way to uh, remember them. Thanks to their discovery, the Africa is now protected under Ontario law as a historic archaeological site. And the research continues, but not just for the shipwreck. We also quickly realized that people were going to be a lot more excited about finding a shipwreck that's 130 years old than they were about a little invasive mollusk. So we're using the story of the shipwreck to really try to bring this story of this epic ecosystem change that's happened that almost nobody knows about way out there in the Great Lakes.